What I love about pellet waggler fishing is how busy it is, and the busier you are, the more you'll catch. The pellet waggler is the perfect method for this time of year. The water's warm, the carp want to be up, and it's all about taking advantage of that. The thing about pellet waggler is that you've got to be busy, you've got to be in and out. It's not a case of chucking out a waggler and firing pellets at it. You've got to make your hook pellet appear as naturally as possible. So it's cast, twitching the bait, feed, twitching your hook bait into the feed. All about trying to trick fish that see a hook bait day in, day out. They're clever fish, so the harder you work, the more you're going to catch. We've started about three foot deep and the level's down, so I don't think there's probably more than seven, eight foot of water out there. But I've not had a sign, and sort of rather than sort of flogging, Flogging the water, fishing shallow, and I can't see any fish. After this chuck, I'm just going to reel it in, just drop it down to sort of four or five foot. It's going to search for the fish. I'm a big believer in sort of making something happen as opposed to waiting for it to happen. Well, we've been fishing about sort of 20, 25 minutes, and as I said, I started at sort of three foot deep. There's just no signs. You know, conditions look good for wag, but there's no fish swirling, there's no fish boiling in the feed, I'm not seeing any fish topping. So I just thought I'd drop it down to sort of five foot, and probably, I don't know, five minutes later, float's gone under, not the normal bite. What I'd expect here is in 100 mile an hour and rod folds in half. It's gone under, I picked up, and there's a proper fish on. And I think on its first run, it's probably gone about 80 metres, but as I said, they are big fishing here and they pull hard, and that's one of the things I love about this type of fishing. It's proper kiting to the right now. He's a big, he's a big, big fish, that is. There you go. That's a proper unit of a pellet waggler caught carp. I'm not one to guesstimate fish, but that's got to be 18 plus. It might even be 20 pound, and that's what I've come to venues like Earlswood for, to fish the pellet waggler. Also, it's a great point, little change, went deeper, no bites, and this fish was feeding there all the time. We're at one of my favourite venues today, Earlswood. It's not a prolific venue anymore, but the fish are big, and it's a big water, and it's challenging, that's what I like. I like big challenging waters where the fish pull back, and that's definitely what we're gonna get today. The way it sort of relates to the Wagners is, this has been the testing ground. This is probably the longest running project these floats have been since I've been involved with Guru, but it's been so important we get them right. The new wagglers come in two sizes, uh, 10 mil and 13 mil. The idea being, as far as I'm concerned, is 10 mil a little bit more finesse, longer, slimmer floats, so they sit better. If there's a strong crosswind like I've got today, nice slim float, it's gonna be more stable and sit better. The, the fat wagglers, as I call them, the 13 mil, they're more designed for what I call fishing on the splash. Big wagglers make a big splash, loads of attraction, so they're for pulling fish. So throughout a session, I probably alternate between the two. When it's windy and I'm struggling for bites, Nice fin waggler, presentation key, and then when the fish arrive, make them have it with a big, thick, chunky wag. Getting a pellet waggler to cast well is really key. You know, I want to be able to act, be accurate, I want to be able to fish off the back of my bait, in my bait, and that's where the flights come in. The flights are right at the tip of the float. What we found is when we were testing the wagglers, if the flights don't sit right at the tip, the float tends to twist in flight, you can't be very accurate, it's harder to feather the float, so they don't fish as well. So the real big important bit as far as I'm concerned is flights at the top of the float, flies nice and straight and true and I can be really accurate and that's going to catch me more fish. Floats both the 10 mil and the 30 mil are loaded so you don't need any shot on the line. When I'm fishing for big carp like I am today, I don't want shot on the line, it can damage the line, it can weaken it. So the floats are loaded, they're loaded as well so the floats sit lovely and low. So again the wind's not catching them and presentation's going to be better. Along with the loading, it's like all in one and you've got a disc there as well. What the disc there for is stop the float diving. Bites today in particular are going to come, the float's going to hit the water, splash, 
and the rod's going to get pulled in. So I need the float to hit and sit straight away, and that's where the disc comes in. When you're fishing the pellet waggler on big waters with big fish, you need a float that's going to last, and that's one of the things I've been really keen on. I mean, strength was an issue when we first started making them, but what we've done now is given the floats an extra coat of varnish, so they're not going to take on water, they're not going to sink, they're not going to become waterlogged. So when I'm fishing, I haven't got to worry about the float letting me down. All I've got to worry about is catching the fish. Size-wise, the 10 mil floats come in smaller sizes because they're what I call like a stealth type waggler, as in all about presentation, all about that little bit of extra finesse. So you've got them in six, eight, and 10 gram. Yes, you can fish the 10 gram at range, but the six gram is perfect for sort of like just trying to mug an odd fish or fishing right in amongst your pellets. When it comes to the 13 mil, which I call the big bertha of the range, that's perfect for waters like Earlswood, Boddington, etc. They're in 10, 12, and 14. They're designed for fishing with big pellets, and I mean 10 mil pellets feeding, and fishing like 30, 40 metres on the waggler. So they're, they're designed perfectly for the job that you're going to need them for. One of the key things to pellet waggler fishing is being able to chop and change your floats. You know what I mean? I want, might want to fish the thin 10 mil and then switch to the bigger 13 mil to create a splash. And that's where one of our new products comes in the, in the form of the waggler adapter. It looks like a normal snap link swivel, but it's not. We've put a clever little twist done on it, which is actually a rounded clasp. And what this does is mean the waggler just sits a lot better. It sits in the middle of the swivel when you're casting, so you can cast straight and true, and also you get less tangles. So it's a really great, simple little product, but one that can make a big difference to your waggler fishing. I think that's as big as the first one virtually. This, as they say, is a proper lump. And that is why I love the pellet waggler.